بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين Each year millions of Muslims make their spiritual journey to Mecca to perform the Hajj or the pilgrimage Hajj consists of two main components One is Umrah al-Tamattu' and the second one is Hajj al-Tamattu' The requirements for Umrah al-Tamattu' are discussed in a different episode we will take a look at the requirements for Hajj al-Tamattu' while a person is in Mecca waiting for their Hajj there are 13 requirements for Hajj al-Tamattu' they begin with one Ihram for Hajj al-Tamattu' this could be done in Mecca it's mustahab recommended to do it in Masjid al-Haram. However, due to traffic and the busy schedule of the Hujjaj, it is permissible to do it anywhere in Mecca, where a person would put on their Ihram and he or she would say, I am entering the state of Ihram for Hajj al-Tamattu'. And if this is your first Hajj, you say, of Hajjatul Islam, obligatory wajib qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala seeking the pleasure of Allah and now a person has just entered into the state of ihram remember there are 25 things that a person cannot do while in the state of ihram among them is cutting hair among them is putting any ornaments such as wearing makeup jewelry expensive watches anything that may be considered as an act of ornament Amongst them is putting a lotion and wiping it on. A person cannot also put any fragrance. So for example, uh, fragranced deodorants or antiperspirants cannot be used. Among the things that are forbidden for men while in the state of Ihram is wearing anything that is stitched. Among the things that are forbidden while in the state of Ihram is having any spousal relationships. In addition, a person while in the state of Ihram must not get angry and lose his or her temper. Now that a person is in the state of Ihram, they've just completed the first of the 13 acts of Hajj al -Tamattu. On the ninth day of the Hijjah, it is mandatory for every person performing Hajj to be in the desert of Arafat known as the desert of Arafat from the time of Zawal which is just about the time of Salat al-Dhuhr until Maghrib the hadith says Al-Hajj Arafah Hajj is Arafah any person performing Hajj must attend the desert of Arafat many groups they go to Arafat on the eve of the ninth of the Hijjah and they spend the night there on the day of the ninth, the day of Arafah, before Salat al-Dhuhr. Usually, the religious leaders will remind the mu'mineen and the mu'minat to make their niyyah. And the niyyah is as follows. I make my intention to do wuquf, to stand or to stay in Arafat from Zawal, which is noon, till Maghrib time for Hajj al tamattu and if this is your first Hajj of Hajjatul Islam, obligatory wajib seeking the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person would stay there. While in Arafat, it is mustahab to recite few du'as. Among the famous du'as that are recommended is du'a al Imam al Hussein salamullahi alayh on the day of Arafah. But this is a recommendation, it's mustahab, it is not a requirement for the fulfillment of an accurate and complete Hajj. On that day, it's also mustahab to ask God for forgiveness and to help us go through a spiritual transformation. As insha'Allah, every person who is attending Arafat will have their sins forgiven by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the second requirement. The third requirement 
is to spend time in a place called Muzdalifah. And that is after Maghrib. People would sometimes go to Muzdalifah. They need to spend the time from before the sunrise until the sunrise at Muzdalifa. So usually people would go there before Fajr and they would make their niyyah that I am doing wuquf, staying in Muzdalifa for my Hajj al-Tamattu' of Hajjatul Islam if it's your first Hajj, obligatory seeking the pleasure of God. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. For women, it is permissible for them to do what's called as al wuquful al which is an expedient stay. So women do not have to stay in Muzdalifa for a prolonged period of time. It could be just a quick stay where they just make their niyyah that I am staying in Muzdalifa for this short period of time of Hajj al tamattu Hajj al islam if it's your first Hajj, wajib qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. For the brothers, you have to stay there until tulu' al-shams, which is sunrise. Now, of course, for women, it's also permissible for you to stay until sunrise, but it's good to follow the directions of the religious leaders and the groups that you are a part of. The fourth is on the day of Eid, which is now the 10th day of the month of the Hijjah, people would go and do Ramyul Jamarat al Kubra, known as Jamarat al Aqaba. So, seven pebbles to stone that what they call the big shaitan. After completing this, then a person would have to sacrifice a sheep. Usually, your group leaders will arrange for that sacrifice on your behalf. The sixth thing is to cut a hair or to shave the hair, either halq or taqseer. And the niyyah is I am doing halq, I am shaving my hair, or to do taqseer, I am doing taqseer to exit the state of ihram for hajj al tamattu And if it's your first hajj, hajj al islam, obligatory seeking the pleasure of Allah. This must be done after the sacrifice of the sheep. Once that is completed, then a person now can take off their ihram and wear stitched clothes for the men. However, a person cannot still put any perfume on, nor can a person have any spousal relationships. So those two conditions are still in effect. What needs to be done next is a person must also now go and do a tawaf around the Kaaba. After doing the tawaf seven times around the Kaaba, a person must now do the next obligation and that is performing Salatul Tawaf. Two rak'at Salat, just like Salatul Fajr, where a person would stand up and say, I am praying two rak'at Salat Tawaf Hajj al tamattu and if it's your first Hajj, Hajjatul Islam, wajib qurbatan ila Allah Ta'ala. Then a person would go on to perform Sa'i between the mountain of Safa and Marwa, where you begin at the mountain of Safa and you end at the mountain of Marwa. A person who is now in this process would have done this already for their Umrah al-Tamattu. So this is something that they're now familiar with. What's important to note here is after finishing the Sa'i in Hajj al-Tamattu, there is no more cutting of the hair and the taqseer. That is only done after the sa'i of Umrah al tamattu So now, upon completion of the sa'i of Hajj al tamattu a person can now put perfume on because that condition has just now been lifted as well. It is then mandatory for the person to go back and do a tawaf seven times around the Kaaba, known as tawaf al-nisa where a person would make the niyyah, I am doing tawaf seven times around the Kaaba, which is tawaf al-nisa, for hajj al tamattu of hajj al-islam, if this is your first time performing hajj, wajib qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. Upon completing the tawaf of al-nisa, 
a person would then go on and perform salatu tawaf al nisa it is important to remind you that a person performing the tawaf must be in the state of wudu and also when performing salatu tawaf a person must also be in the state of wudu while it is not required to be in the state of wudu while doing the sa'i upon completing these actions now there are only a couple items left and remaining. One is the Mabit in Mina. On the day of Eid, the eve of the 11th of the month of the Hijjah, a person must stay in Mina either from Maghrib till midnight or midnight till Fajr or sunrise. This must be done on the day of Eid, which is the 10th day of the Hijjah, the eve of the 11th, and the eve of the 12th, the 11th day of the Hijjah in the evening as well. So these two evenings, a person must stay for part of the night, or some people, they just make their niyyah and they stay for the whole night, which is also permissible. The niyyah is, I am doing baytutah, I am staying in Mina, from Maghrib till midnight, or from midnight till sunrise or Fajr for Hajjul Tamattu' of Hajjatul Islam, Wajib Qurbatan illallah ta'ala. The last remaining item to be performed as part of the 13 requirements for Hajjul Tamattu' is the Ramyul Jamarat. And this is to be done on the 11th day of the Hijjah as well as the 12th day. Now remember, on the 11th day and the 12th day of the month of the Hijjah, a person must stone all three Jamarat with seven pebbles each. Upon completion of this, on the 12th day of the Hijjah, you remain in Mina until Salat al-Dhuhr and the Adhan, and that's when you can leave Mina. And if you have already performed your Tawaf, Salat al-Tawaf, Sa'i, Tawaf al-Nisa and Salatu Tawaf al-Nisa, then you have just accomplished your Hajj. Congratulations, you've completed all the obligations of Hajj. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.